Good evening, Solid Rock family, and welcome to Bible Study. My name is Elder Sandra Williams, and I'd like to welcome you again to Bible Study. Welcome to our live viewers, and welcome to our replay viewers. As you know, we have been studying worship for the past couple of months, and I know that if you've been here at Bible Study, if you have been at our Sunday morning services, that your worship life has, has been impacted because of what you've been studying and the sermons that have been preached. Well, to Tonight we are going to continue that. And now we're getting ready to study worship and music. I am so excited because on tonight we have uh, our Minister of Music, Minister Reggie Green, who is going to come and teach us about music and corporate worship. So I'm going to open up in prayer and then turn it over to, to Reggie Green. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all honor, glory, and praise on tonight. God, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for this opportunity to learn more about you through worship. God, we thank you for everything that you have taught us about worship thus far, oh God. And God, we ask that we continue to increase our worship, that our worship be impacted so that we can grow closer to you. God, I thank you for each and every person that's listening on tonight. And God, as we listen, we take this word and let it impact impact our worship life. God, we thank you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God and good evening, Solid Rock Nation. It is a privilege to be before you to talk on uh, corporate worship as music relates to such. Uh, first, I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then to the angel of this house, Bishop Luther K. Brooks and First Lady Kimberly Brooks. It is indeed an honor and a privilege. Um, music is a vital, vital part of worship. Uh, it is universal, first and foremost, and it is a part of every, some it's a part of everything that we do in life, so to speak, whether it's rhythmically or in some way we rely on music, um, sometimes consciously, unconsciously. Um, it's just a part of um, who we are and how we respond to a lot of things. Um, in dealing with corporate worship, first we need to understand what worship is um, and then what corporate is so that we can tie these two things together. Uh, worship is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. Um, that is a divine status, uh, it could be the creator or the supreme being. So corporate is a large group or a collective or a combining um, or gathering of a mass. So when we put that together as corporate worship, um, Corporate worship is a large group or collective gathering together to convey expressions of reverence and adoration to the Most High God. Now, in our corporate worship and as it relates with music, you have to have the right type of music in anything that you do. It sets the overall mood or the tone for whatever is going on. Um, when you go to a celebration or um, of some sort, whether it be a football game or some type of sports event, there's music that is played. Um, and according to what is going on, it hypes up the crowd and gets everyone um, embraced into it and pulls everyone into participating. Um, when you go to maybe something more of an extravagant um, event that is more scaled down and you're talking about uh, maybe more societal, um, has a lot of uh, reverence to it, or in terms or aspects of it being um, a palatial type setting, then you're going to have music that is going to be um, more appropriate and adequate to that. It will allow you to, um, the vibe of the room or the surroundings, everything will kind of con pull itself around to that music and how the music um, sets the overall tone and the atmosphere. So uh, corporate worship is also the proper response of a gathered church to God, the Trinity, for his past, present, and future works, especially as they pertain to reigning and redemption. It requires an accurate understanding of God's greatness and goodness. 
It is characterized by an earnest attitude of awe, devotion, confidence, and submission that results in obedience and service. Now, when we are entering into corporate worship, we have to have a mindset that's already gathered, that's already, um, that is already predetermined that that's what we're gonna do. Coming together as a group of believers it first starts with the individual. I'm here to speak on corporate, but of course, when we come together to do corporate worship, our mindset has to be that of one, that we're coming together knowing that our uh, attitude and our, our spirits are coming to gel together with the same purpose in mind to create one sound and to enter into the Holy of Holies so that God can be reverenced and that we can give him adoration and adulation. Um, corporate worship is commanded by our Lord. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another. So God commands us to worship him. He expects that from us. He desires that from us. Corporate worship is, corporate worship is when and where the Holy Spirit shows up to teach, inspire, and interpret Matthew 18 20 for where two or three are gathered together in my name I am there in the midst of them so when we're coming together as a group there's more power there's more energy of course we can in our own individual times we can worship with uh, worship God uh, as an individual but when there's strength in numbers and so when we come together as a collective all in the same mindset in tune with reverencing the Most High God then just think about the power and the energy that goes out and that goes into that and the results that come out of that as God's people have come together with the intent to lift him up and to magnify him for the great things that he has done to honor him for his sovereignty. Now, corporate worship is vital to our spiritual growth. Coming together with other believers helps us to encourage others. It allows us to be encouraged and grow together in our common faith in Jesus Christ. Now, let's tie music into this. Music enables us to engage both the body and the mind as one unit. So it's no more separation of two entities, but it's one unit now. And everything is working together. Music brings that about, or music incorporates, incorporates that to its people. And it allows us to get into that mode of worship or it sets the overall tone and the mood and the atmosphere so that now we're knowing what we're ready to do. If music is not right, if it's not done right, if not the right selection of music, then what we're gonna actually have is a crash. We're gonna be distorted, we're gonna be distracted, and someone who is in tune to what true worship is will pick up on this. Some people have not a clue and they'll just think that it's appropriate have this type of music or that type of music and it won't matter. But what will happen is that we cannot enter into the full presence of God as we want to and to worship him because the least little thing can be distracting. And as a heavy burden on musicians or the minstrels because we have to be able to flow and be susceptible to the anointing of what is going on at that time. And so we cannot be out of character. We cannot be off course or distracted. So we have to be in tune with where the spirit is leading and taking us or the worship leader is taking us as we are entering into the Holy of Holies. Music, as I said, sets the overall atmosphere for worship. Um, music was created to bring worship unto God. That's just how important it is. He established and created music for the sole purpose that it can bring him worship. And so you'll notice that it plays an intricate part in a lot of things that we do. Music is universal. No matter what the culture, no matter what the, the language may be, but music will in some way manipulate us, cause us to move, cause us to react. Um, it could be 
any type of genre, any genre of music, and you'll find yourself either moving your body, you're patting your foot, you're clapping your hands. Uh, any of these things is a reaction to music. And if you're not careful sometimes, it depends if you're doing a search or streaming radio stations, then you may accidentally hit a station that is not gospel, not Christian, um, but you can get caught up in the music, just the rhythm of it, the beat. Uh, music just has that tendency to take us um, to places maybe we don't want to go, maybe where we do want to go, but it just impacts us that way. Now, again, back to the thing of music being the right type of music when we're doing worship. We want to make sure that it is conducive to what we're doing in lifting up God and magnifying him and edifying him and his kingdom. Um, it is a very bad, it is a very bad situation when you can't distinguish gospel music from R&B or hip hop or other genres of music. Um, and a lot of times it is hard to listen to 103.9 um, and think that you're listening to a gospel station because it sounds like 97.5. Uh, these are local radio stations in the, uh, the Triangle area. And so when there's both, they both sound the same and there's no distinction, uh, what is the difference then? What are we portraying to the world? It should be that the church is influencing the world and not the world influencing the church. Music can be lyrical, it can be lyrical and or instrumental. Now by that, when you're getting ready to enter into worship, there can be lyrics, verses, or singing with the music, or it can be instrumental. If it's going to be lyrics associated with the music, then it needs to, again, say what we want it to say as or in regards to how we are preparing to worship our, uh, our God. And so the words need to be right, the verses need to be right. If it's gonna be instrumental, it still needs to be right. Um, I'll get to an example of that in a moment, but music pierces into the deep parts of our soul. It assists in our expression and our response to God. The emotional power of music when rightly employed is a vital and effective aid to worship. It is important that worship music be honest and not manufactured. And by that, you want true, genuine worship. You want that music to be that as well. You don't want it to be something manufactured. I don't sit around conjuring up or making up something on the keyboard just for showmanship but it has to be all done under the anointing. And as it is important that worship music be honest, it needs to reverence God. It does not need to be about self, does not need to be about issues or problems. We're not, in a sense, when we're in worship, asking God, can you do me this favor? Can you do this for me? Da, da, da. We are thanking him for all that he's already done, his mighty works, his mighty acts, his goodness, and his kindness. And that's the reason we have to have that understanding of God's greatness and goodness. Music should serve the lyrics. God is a speaking God. While communication happens on many levels, the word is always central in God's dealings with us. We see this in the placing of the Ten Commandments or in the Ark of the Covenant and in the description of Jesus as the word of God made flesh. So music should serve to emphasize and heighten the impact of the word. Joyful words should be accompanied by joyful music. Words of repentance and awe are sometimes appropriately sung to music that is more somber. In general, music is effective, and get this, music is effective when people in the congregation are more affected by the truth than the tune. So we're not in worship to captivate people by the sound of melodies or harmonies, things of that nature. We're, 
just simply trying to usher everyone into the presence of God to be an audience before him and bask in his glory for the great things that he has done for us. Now, of course, we have to minister songs that have solid content in order for this to happen, in order for the people of God, the worshipers, to um, be affected by the truth. Music should serve the context. As an emotional language, music can prepare hearts to receive the word of God. Music can also give opportunity for people to respond emotionally to something that has just been said. Music can provide smooth transitions between segments of a meeting, and it can also give support to someone who is speaking. We all know that sometimes when uh, preachers reach the climax of the sermon, um, there's music that accompanies them as they have already made their points and laid out the foundation of their sermon. And as they get to the climactic part, there's sometimes music that comes in to uh, accompany and not to overpower them, uh, not to substitute what the message is, but just to be that, that undergirding for them and just to take it to that next level. That's the importance of music. If you notice, music is important and it is very detrimental to whatever the mode or the mood is. If you watch movies, you'll notice that a movie producer will implement certain types of music for certain types of scenes. If you're watching um, a romantic movie, there'll be music that is romantic or more subtle and that just kind of draws the audience into that scene at that time. If it's something that is with drama or suspense, the music becomes intense in the background and you hear that and it prepares the audience to get ready for something to happen. Um, if it is a horror movie, um, when it's about time for someone to be killed and the killer's approaching or whatever, that music, it lets you know something's about to happen, but it's setting you up for that scene. Well, the same thing with music in corporate worship, in any type of worship, that music is taking you there, it sets you up. So if music is that template that we're using and we are in that mode and we're all there worshiping God, and then all of a sudden, something happens where the musician or the music goes in a different direction, it can stop everything in its tracks. It's a distraction, and it takes us out of our place of worship. And there we are, and we are the ones responsible, those that are responsible for the, the music, whether it be a worship leader or whether it be uh, our worship team, whether it be a choir singer, whether it be the musicians themselves. But if we falter in any way, it affects the entire body of worshipers. A good example is on a Sunday morning, I often tell our music ministry that you have to give yourself enough time to prepare before we come together to worship or to minister music. There's nothing worse than uh, anyone that is going to have anything to do with a worship service standing before God's people, but let's uh, use the music ministry as an example, that you have, you got up already on the wrong side of the bed that morning, you've argued with your spouse, you're mad with the kids, nothing is going right, you thought that your shirt was ironed or your blouse and it's wrinkled and so now that's throwing you behind and you got this going on, trying to feed the family and you're trying to get in the car and get to the church on time, you get in the car and between home and the church, Everybody on Sunday morning is going somewhere else other than church, and they're sightseeing. And you're getting behind them, and it's making you late, and you're saying things under your breath. You might be saying them verbally and vocally that you shouldn't be saying. Uh, your demeanor is wrong. And so you rush into the parking lot, and you're about to run people walking from their cars into the church over trying to get into a parking space because you got to be in place by a certain time before service starts. So you come in, you're late, it's time for service to begin, and you run in off of the street and get on a hot mic with all of 
the contamination and the pollution that is in you because of how your morning started. And now you're fixing to get before God's people and you're gonna lead them in worship. And what you don't realize is that everything that is inside of you, the wrong words or language that you spoke or that you said or that you thought, the wrong expressions that you conveyed to your mate, your spouse, to your children, now you're getting in front of God's people and you're fixing to glorify him and his kingdom. But all of that junk that was in you from the time you got up that morning or that you left the house is in you and now you're fixing to release that and unleash that to God's people. So now you're contaminating the people that are before you. Everything that's in you, you're pouring into them. Well, back to my point. What we have to realize and what we have to understand is that we have to have solid content in what we're doing, but our emotions, our expressions, who we are, um, has our demeanor has to be right. We just can't come in off of the streets hot and not have any, prep um, any preparation before service begins, before worship begins, or any and everything. We have to get things right within ourselves and then be ready to enter into corporate worship and to lead others into corporate worship. So when a body of worshipers get together, it can be contagious. It can be a good, um, contagious, it can be a bad contagious, but when you get together with a group of uh, believers of a like-minded, uh, precious faith, and then all of that comes together, somebody that left their house that morning that didn't really want to be at church and they're just coming because it's Sunday and they may have the mindset of, well, what else do I have to do? What else, uh, what have I got to lose? And they come just to be in church, but not to be a part of worship, not to be a part of the flow of service, but when they get together with other believers, that energy, that energy excites and becomes contagious and it spreads and it helps people to forget all about their issues and their problems in spite of anything and everything going on. It helps to be around other believers and it reminds you that no matter what I'm going through, God is still good. The same thing with the music has to be right to put us in that mind that mindset and that frame of mind and understanding these things. Again, like I said, music is effective when people in the congregation are more affected by the truth than the tune. And again, when people, uh, when the music is right, when the people are right, the woes that are leading us in worship are right, that makes all the difference. Um, as I was saying also that um, how the music will lead us between different scenes of what is happening um, in our worship, again, we want to make sure, we want to make sure that it is the appropriate music um, we don't want to manipulate and again make the music about us or about other things other than where we are in God and in our moment of worship. Um, once all of this is established, music should be relevant and edifying to the group or to the body of worshipers. Assuming that the music we choose for corporate worship serves the words and the context, our next concern should be that it edifies those who are present. This means that the music must say what we want it to say. We shouldn't present complex music um, or classical music, something that is out of the scope or the range of young children. They're used to a certain type of music that they can relate to. So we don't, and I'm talking about smaller children that are impressionable. We wouldn't want to put upon them classical music where they have no knowledge or understanding of it where they're used to nursery rhymes, or they're, using, they're used to uh, kindergarten music, things of that nature, something that they can relate to. Same thing with your other group of people. You have um, a more advanced, uh, more mature congregation or, or members in your congregation, um, more older, 
And so you're not looking to do something that is going to blow their ear canals and not looking to do hard rock or things of that nature um, that they cannot relate to. Music has a place in every genre, in every walk of life. There's music out there that is gospel music, but has different gen genres even within gospel music. There's inspirational music, there is spiritual, there are hymns, there are contemporary pieces, um, but the thing, and inspirational, but all of that is not always appropriate in the tabernacle. Um, it's just certain things that are fitting for certain occasions at whatever the flow is going on at that time. And so you do not want to um, be singing the blood still works when it is Christmas time and we're talking about the birth of Jesus. Nor do you want to be singing Jesus, Jesus, oh what a wonderful child when it is Easter. We're talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. Everything should have the right context for the right time of whatever's going on. Um, so in making sure that our music fits to what is going on, it also implies that music should never overpower the words. In the culture that we're in now, God still deals with the truth. And that's the reason it says that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Music is meant to stir our emotions, but it's not that we're saying that we got goosebumps because of the music, but it's where the music inspired us, where the music led us, where the music was conducive and took us to that place that we were trying to go in our worship, our corporate worship to God. It is more engaging to do worship together as a group. A good example is you can listen to music by yourself when you're alone in your car or at home, but there's a special energy and a presence and a different vibe when you go to a concert and hear the same music you listen to by yourself at home when you go to a concert or a gathering filled with other people and you listen to that same music. There's a different vibe, a different feel because you are among other people and they're getting excited and energized off of that same music and it becomes contagious. It's like wildfire, it starts spreading. And so when we come together to do corporate worship, there's a different feel, there's a different vibe. It's contagious. And it's not that we're in a competition to out worship one another, but the simple fact that we are creating one sound and God is being glorified because our purpose and our intent is to worship him and to come together as a group of believers on the same track and unified. So when our spirits are unified and we enter in together from the outer court into the inner court and into the Holy of Holies, all because the music that was engaging our body and our minds together has helped transition us now into that place that we need to be in, in God. Uh, we are all fans of Jesus, and we're all fans of Jesus who get to build off of the energy of others, others singing, others praying, and the worshiping alongside one another. Um, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. That's First Corinthians uh, 14, be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. That comes from Ephesians 5. We are sharing our joy together, and, that mag and it becomes magnified because of that. Our worship becomes magnified. So all these things together help us to effectively go and enter into worship with our Savior. God appreciates and honors what we do collectively when we're not distracted, when he becomes our center of attention. Um, things change, situations change. And the thing about it is with the craziness of the world and what we see going on today, when a group of believers can get together 
and tune all of that out, not being concerned about that, but going on out there. There's this going on, addictions, afflictions, sicknesses, pandemics, and all of that. But we take the time to collectively come together to say, no matter what, God, you are still on the throne. You are still worthy. And this is our praise. Here is our worship. So what we need to ask ourselves is, does our music encourage corporate worship? Does the music encourage congregational singing? Does it incorporate everyone to come together and draw everyone in to be a part of the worship? Uh, or is it designed for just one person to take the helm and lead us? Um, does it come across as entertainment? That's very important to observe and wonder or make sure that we're focused on that. We are not there to entertain, we're there to worship. There, are, there is gospel music out there that I deem appropriate for entertainment. There's music um, that is gospel, so to speak, that I think is good for inspiration on Saturday mornings when you are around the house vacuuming, <laughs> uh, dusting, or outside at the car wash or in your driveway washing your car and you just want to get pumped up and things like that. There's gospel music for that. Um, but again, what is the music saying? Does it reverence God? Does it honor him? Is he pleased with it? So in our worship, we need to ask ourselves, is the music that we are ministering encouraging corporate worship? Are soloists or worship teams or choirs effectively leading and supporting the congregation or the group of worshipers in its worship? Or are they merely displaying their virtuosity, their skills, their abilities, their techniques, their dynamics? It is a place for that at times, but when you're in worship, it's all about God. That is the central figure. That is the only figure. And so we're not there to put on a concert. We're not there um, a lot of people from time to time will catch um, the musicians in the church and suggest songs. Have you heard that song? Or that out of this, you know, this artist and that artist, whatever. And some of the suggestions that we get sometime, I look at the person and I'm like, what, what do you get from the song? It's fine um, if it ministers to, to you in a certain way, but in a setting, a corporate setting, where we're trying to stay focused in worshiping and reverencing God, that song wouldn't be appropriate, not really at any time within the four walls of the church. Um, and a lot of time I have to tell um, our musicians, you know, it's good to get suggestions and everything, but sometimes people tend to think that we are disc jockeys um, <laughs> and we're a radio station and they're just calling in to us with their own personal request. And that's not what we're here to cater to. If it doesn't glorify God, then it can't come from our music ministry. Um, it's good to have a variation of music, um, but it just depends on what, when, and where, uh, and what the flow of the service is. You don't know how many um, times that we have prepared as a music ministry, music for service, um, toil long and hard at rehearsals, and then come on Sunday morning ready to minister these songs, but all because the Holy Spirit has another agenda and the only agenda that matters that all the songs that we rehearsed or whatever and took the time to research, practice, and perfect, that is not going to happen on this Sunday because of the move of the Holy Spirit, and we follow that first and foremost. Or there have been times we are, are in the back, our praise team's in the back before service, um, rehearsing something, and a pastor may walk in and say, Y'all, my sermon is about this today, and the Lord put this song in my spirit. And so just be prepared because I don't know where we're going or where the Spirit's going to take us, but we're just going to follow it. And we have to be ready to go with it. Or if he has a certain song uh, in mind that he wants to be ministered, then we have to forego whatever we plan and prepare according to what the angel of this house is going to be doing and ministering so that we can be in sync. We don't want him to have a message going this way and we come behind him or before him doing a message that's going to take the congregation this way and divide. So it has all, it has to all come together um, and minister effectively 
so that everyone is receiving the same thing and being imparted the same wisdom and knowledge from God um, at the same time. So we have to ask ourselves, are we doing this for ourselves? Or are we doing it to the glory of God and to worship him? We have to ask ourselves, um, do the hymns or the choruses or the stanzas or the verses or any of the lyrics that we sing express the faith of the gathered worshipers or do they tend toward individual and private expressions of faith? Remember, there is individual worship, but there is corporate worship. And so what we want to always do when we come together we want to uplift one another, encourage one another, so that we can all create one sound um, that is unified and that brings honor and glory and reverence to God. We want to please him in all that we do. Um, there's nothing that is more, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, more frustrating to me and disgusting to me is when ever we have ministered during a worship service and it's not that I'm disappointed because we didn't nail the song as I would like for it to have been perfected or executed or ministered but just the fact that we did not give all of our selves all of the glory that God deserves and when we do that or we don't by what I'm led to believe is hit the mark. It does something to me that I cannot really, and I've told my musicians and uh, my music ministry before, that I can't rebound from it during service. There have been times when I'm sitting there knowing that we did not minister in the effective way that we should have, that we did not bring about God's people to where they should have been. And it's not that I'm expecting that any time that we sing that people have to react a certain way, but it's just that we didn't fail the people, we fail God. And so we are the front line in the music ministry. We come out before um, anything else takes place. So we're that front line of defense. And we are fighting off and beginning to do warfare with the music. We are... Um, bringing down strongholds. We are destroying and breaking yokes. And so if we don't do that in the beginning, it makes everything else during the service even harder to, to obtain or to go through um, up until when the pastor gets up to deliver his sermon. So we're the ones who have to break up that hard fallow ground and we have to get the soil ready and prepared for everyone to receive. So the purpose of music in corporate worship is to lay that foundation, that groundwork. And if we all come together with the right attitude, the right spirit, and with our mind stayed on him to begin with, then when we come together as a collective in closing, we can magnify God, we can take him to the place, take the worshipers to the place that we desire to be, that we want to be, that closeness, that intimacy with God, and there's no place like it. And once you've been there and you've had that experience and that encounter, you'll know that you're there, that you've been there, and that you've been in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. Wait a minute, Reggie. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Come back, come back. This is, oh, uh, this was, I don't know about y'all, but this was, awesome this was awesome teaching i mean they say you know we always say that good students take notes well i took a whole bunch of notes <laughs> about corporate worship and just the transparency because as a minister of music i know it gets difficult i know like, like when you said because i know i'm one of those kind that i say oh reggie can you play this can you play <laughs> so I, I i thoroughly understand and everything and it's real exciting just to hear and understand more about corporate worship. So we thank you so much for, for bringing that and teaching that. And so y'all, when we come together on Sunday, Reggie has taught us tonight that music is a vital part of worship. And I wanna repeat that, that sentence that you had. I wanna make sure I get it. That music is effective when people are affected by truth and not the tune.
That was deep. That was, I mean, because when you think about that particular sentence and, and from, a, from a teaching perspective, that music is effective when, when I am, when I am affected by the truth, by the word of God, the truth of the word, that music is here to usher people into the presence of God. And so we thank our music ministry, and we're going to have more of this. This is our uh, first teaching, because all the, the, the teaching we've done on worship so far has been on individual worship, having God, how God speaks to you, how you hear God. Uh, we, we've also taught um, on last week, uh, you heard testimonies around worship. And we also talked about worship and speaking in tongues. And all of that was individual. So this was our first teaching on corporate worship. So now when we come together on Sundays, after we've been with the Lord all week long, and we come together on Sundays, then we know when we come together that we will have that one sound that one sound that edifies God. And we are so excited about this teaching. Thank you so much, Reggie. This is awesome. This is awesome. Amen. So for you all, um, Reggie didn't give you a homework assignment, but I am. <laughs> Y'all know I love to give homework assignments. So uh, Reggie taught us about music and having the proper and the right music, having the proper and the right music. So uh, your homework assignment is to get two songs, one being a hymn, out of a, a hymn out of a hymn book, okay? That kind of hymn. That's the kind of hymn I'm talking about. Get a, a hymn and then uh, a gospel song, a song that really speaks to you, a hymn that speaks to you. Like my favorite hymn is Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And so that hymn means something to me. And so then I have other songs I just love that are, that are worship songs. So what are yours? Get those for you and then in your private time, you can worship. And then when we come together collectively on Sunday, you can imagine the fire that will be on these grounds. Whether we're on these grounds or whether you're going to be watching us from uh, YouTube, there's going to be fire because we are corporately worshiping. So again, we thank you for being with us tonight on Bible study. We invite you to be with us on Sunday morning here at 401 Creech Road in the parking lot or watching us virtually via our YouTube channel at Solid Rock Nation. You can also see us online uh, at our, on our website or again, follow us on YouTube. So we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you have allowed to come forth through this teaching on corporate worship on tonight. God, we ha you have opened our eyes. You've used our minister of music to open our eyes about how important music is, not just any music, but how important music is such that when we come together, there is one sound and that one sound is edifying you. God, we just thank you for this teaching on tonight. We thank you for the man of God who has studied and who has brought it forth to us on tonight. So God, when we come together, worship will be edifying you, glorifying you, magnifying you. It's all about you. And God, we give you honor, glory, and praise for that. God, we thank you for all of our Solid Rock family, both the Solid Rock family here at the church and our virtual Solid Rock family. God, we ask that you continue to bless our pastor, bless our first lady, and bless everyone, oh Father God, as we move forward in worship with you. God, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So again, we thank you for being here at Bible Study, and we'll see you on Sunday morning.